He's oh. going to say never. <laughs> never in doubt. <laughs> never in doubt, baby. Jerk man. Happy St. Pat's, buddy. Yes, sir. You too. I, I hate to tell you this, but... Um, tell me. Say it. I think the Sharks are going to miss the playoffs again. What? All right. I'm seeing Ramones ready for this episode. Let's go. Show 213. We welcome you back into another episode of the Pucknologist. You're only completely live, unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, and commercial free sharks podcast. Wrapping up the week in San Jose Sharks hockey, part of Teal Town, USA. As always, if it's your first time checking us out, remember to hit like and subscribe on the platform of your choosing and leave your takes in the comments section if you're not able to join us on the live chat. And remember, during every episode, baby, we're giving away some prizes. We have things to give away. We have things to say. We have things to give away. <laughs> we're talking prizes? <laughs> we're talking prizes. We're talking prizes. All right, so you know how it rolls. Uh, it's Pucknologist Takeover, so grab your corned beef and cabbage, a Guinness, maybe a shot of JMO, and let's get to the game you just watched. Oh, never in <laughs> doubt. Never in doubt. No, never. <laughs> I mean, we literally have the tweets and receipts, if you will. Go check at hockey underscore jerk. We had the <laughs> script to this game earlier today. Yes, we did. Uh, I told you to hammer the five and a half, right? Yeah. It was looking critical early on, but uh, it came through at a moment's notice, quite literally. <laughs> oh, dude. I uh, What was the uh, – who got the first goal for Chicago? Um, Kurashev. Kurashev. Kurashev gets it. And I'm like, all right, you know, obviously we, we, know, uh, we know the story here. We know what's going on. And so I'm like, all right, Kurashev. Okay, 2-2. Two, two plan is in motion to one and then uh yes no i'm i'm sorry i meant the first goal in the chicago comeback um <laughs> but uh because <laughs> that's really because up until that point the sharks looked really good they looked great and in then, the first period yeah and then the wheels just kind of blew off of it you know you know what dude it was literally like where's my sharks oh third period there's my sharks it, it's almost <clears throat> it's almost like the scoreboard flipping over to the three it's kind of like uh it's kind of like ringing a bell almost where it's just like, oh, I, I heard it. Okay, we got to Okay, we're going to do the thing now, right? <laughs> it's kind of how it feels, which is unfortunate, but, you know, the world we're living in now. Yeah, so let's see here. Um, <laughs> I mean, where where do we start? All right, well, let's, let's start with Cooley. Chief gets his NHL debut, right? Yep, that's All right. correct. Throw it up there, Steven. So, Devin Cooley, your goaltender for the day for San Jose. And uh, first goalie, of course, California-born to appear in a game for a California-based NHL team. I mean, dude, <laughs> Shark, Kings, Ducks, Seals, over 57 years. This is the first. Woof. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, fifth California-born player in San Jose Sharks history. So, that, that's kind of cool. And then uh, your first NHL player born in Santa Clara County to play for the Sharks and the second junior Shark to play for the Sharks, at least for now. Isn't Celebrini <laughs> a member of the junior Sharks? <laughs> uh, that is correct. All right. So let's make that a, a, a solid three, shall we? <laughs> so Cooley gets it, and I'm thinking, okay. And, I mean, I literally sent it to you. It's one of two things. He's going to let in, you know, five on 18, or he's going to stop 44-45. Because that's the way the Sharks roll. Some of you may remember Nabby's first ever start where he and Patrick Waugh go to a scoreless tie. Then did we we all remember Nolan Schaefer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was like in Carolina, wasn't it? Uh, I, it was definitely on the road. Yeah. I can't recall if it was Carolina or not, but well, Troy Grosnick was in Carolina. Oh, okay. That's I'm conflating the two, but either way, it's like, we've had a couple of those guys. So it was like, it was going to be one or the other, man, dude, dude was either going to get walked 
or he was going to be like, oh, and, and of course, if he had stopped 44 for 45, then it would have been like, oh, we should have traded Blackwood. and <laughs> <laughs> Goalie of the future, man. <laughs> exactly, dude. How many times have we heard that? So, and How, the, just the amount of, like, in the last four years, the amount of goalies of the future the Sharks have had. I'm telling you. And like, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll tell you, dude, when it was two nothing, and we'll 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 get to those in a minute, but when it was two nothing in this game, mm-hmm. I was like, of all the fucking games you're gonna win this week, it's gonna be against Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Like, why <laughs> uh, of all games to look good in, right? Oh dude, yeah, it, I, like I was gonna be so pissed. Yeah, and, and thankfully, you know, if this is your you know, thought process, which it should be. Thankfully, uh, that whole idea kind of fell apart relatively quickly. Oh, can't say enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's but- funny because you you mentioned, you know, in the DM, right? Like, oh, Cooley's going to, you know, let in five goals on 18 shots or, you know, 44 out of 45 saves. And I kind of feel like at various points we were seeing a little bit of both, no? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And, you know, when the Sharks were up to nothing, I was just, I'm, I, I was just kind of like so dumbfounded, but I was like, this is so Sharks. Cause yeah, the Hawks got walked five, nothing on Friday, mm-hmm. but they were at home. They played on Friday. You know, the Sharks were on the road, played the night before playing their third and four nights. And I'm going, yeah, so it means the Sharks are going to win because every other thing says this is a game they should lose. Right. So when they got up 2 nothing, I'm like, God damn it, you assholes. And then the third period arrived, and I was like, never in doubt. <laughs> <laughs> never in and doubt. Really, and really, and you know, and, and this is kind of like sort of the beginning of the end, if you will, because I think it was maybe last week or two weeks ago where – we were pretty much in agreement, like depending on how this, uh, you know, today's game, obviously, and then six days from now on Saturday, mm-hmm. you know, depending on those two, how those two games go may, you know, may seal the deal for, uh, for the old first overall pick there. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, like I was saying dude, it's like of all the fucking games you decide to, Oh, never mind, Never in doubt. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's like, say, that's why they always say, you know, on both ends, it's a 60 minute game, right? Mm hmm. And I even had it in the notes. I was like, this will be the game we point. If the Sharks had won, this would be a game that we would point to if Chicago ended up with the best odds for the draft by a couple points, you know? Right. <laughs> I was like, God damn it, you had it. It was like it was like that Arizona game last year, right? <laughs> <laughs> so to start off with, um, dude, the first first goal, that Barabanov pass that he basically passes it off the pads of Mrazic. And Carpenter buries it, and I you kind of got a you know a little stick tap for that because Barabanov got demoted in the last game and then st- again starts on the fourth line today, right? Like Chief should have a little extra jump, a little something to prove. Yeah, you you would hope. I mean, especially uh, as a guy who seemingly has made it clear that uh he will be ditching this bitch at year's end <laughs> and so dude. you know you you want to make a good impression uh for your future employer right oh dude d- doesn't it feel <laughs> like he's uh trying to t- we've heard of the irish exit i feel like he's working on the duclair exit yeah it could be you know i mean getting get hot at the right time right exactly then uh you got coast in making the number 10 proud speaking of duclair I mean, and and then, dude, what a feed from Granlin behind the net! It's it's totally like, oh, that was like just like jumbo to anyone back in the day. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's two nothing, and at that point, you're going, "You sons of bitches! <laughs> <laughs> how could you do this to me? Yes, how are you ruining my St. Patty's Day?" But the second period, you get, dude, Bedard to Johnson to Kurashev. It's two one. Beauty of a sequence. No goalie is saving that. I don't care if your name is uh, Swayman, Soros, you know, Vasilevsky. I mean, insert name here. Cooley, you're not making that save. Right. Oh, that was a chef's kiss goal. You got to give it up. So 
Kurashev, it's 2-1. And then after two periods, you're going 2-1. Dude, I got to be honest, man. I was kind of like, yeah, Chicago's got this, baby. <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> dude, when it was 2-1, I'm like, there's no way. that Because San Jose, I think, has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt this season. They don't know how to play with a fucking lead. They just <laughs> don't. We I'm we gotta run the numbers like oh. I think we had talked about I think we had talked about it where like what you know uh what per what is the sharks record when they score the first goal because I think it was it was two weeks ago right where it was like man I, I'm getting a lot of shark score first twenty percent off emails and yet I'm <laughs> seeing a lot of losses you know oh, dude I I stopped. <laughs> It was uh, it was uh, the twelve three game I think against mm-hmm. the was that the Rangers? Yes. Yeah. So it was also around my uh, quote unquote cardiac event. <laughs> I was keeping track of that shit, and at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this because <laughs> it was just so silly to keep track of it because it was going to be so bad. Mm-hmm. So right. it's like you know. Did they have a lead? Uh, well, then chances are they lost. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <sighs> All right. We do have some uh, comments coming in. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that uh, for this post game. And then we'll obviously move on to the uh, third period. Uh, Coaston saying, I think we just lost focus in the third period and chased their offense. You, <laughs> you don't you, say. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. But dude, that was right up there with uh, the Kakinen quote a week ago where it was like, we had the lead, we lost the lead. Then it went to overtime and we lost. <laughs> so, great summation. Right. You know, like all the riders, you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> there's your there's your scoop. When, yep. you, when, when you score less than the other team, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Bob. <laughs> so, uh, coasting on his goal. I got a pass from Granlin. It was pretty simple. I mean, we just talked about it, but yeah, it was, uh, you, you got to give it to Granny. Dude, I... And I have this, you know, as, as part of our notes, something that I want to talk about, but I mean, we can kind of get into it here for a minute, but dude, if granny keeps this up, like how great is it going to be to have him next season Two two things? First off, a guy who's going to help drive the bus, hopefully with couture. Mm-hmm. But if he continues this, how good is his trade value going to be at the deadline next season? Yeah, I, I and to even take it a step further, I mean, the trade value, obviously, but kind of like what we've talked about many times before, you've seen every rebuild that there's a, a one, two, three players who maybe it would make sense to trade them, but you don't, and you kind of keep them and see it through. Mm-hmm. What if Mikhail Granlund is that guy? You know, what if the value that he cultivates ends up being from a sort of kind of veteran presence and then mentor lead, lead the charge coming out of the tunnel kind of thing. I mean, he is 31 now. And, you know, by the time the sharks are competing, eating, he might be 33, 34, 35. So maybe it doesn't <laughs> make sense, but maybe it does. I, I, I think we talked about it last week where whatever road the sharks end up taking with Grandland, it's a win because if they trade him, they're going to get good return on return on investment based on the Eric Carlson trade. But then also, but if they keep him, he's a good presence for the younger players. Yes, all of those things are true. But one spicy meatball. Mm-hmm. You want to move Granlin next season? He's making five mil. And next season, you have no retention slots available. What if I told you Say it, that man. what if I told you that next season the salary cap is going up four mil? So I feel you, but you get what I'm saying. I do get what you're saying, but I also think it is a bit of a red herring only because the salary cap going up and that's at least four mil. It could be more for all we know. I mean, maybe not much more, but more. And so I think just more money in the, or I should say more space in the system, I think will eliminate, um, the difficulties we've seen with trading the last few years um, and, and worst case scenario, like if they're dying to move them and get whatever their hypothetical return is, you know, y- there's no uh, degree to which Mike Greer won't go to make it happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get some more quotes from the dressing room following Chicago and San Jose. 
Coasting on Cooley. He's been really good all game. It's our fault. He kept us in the game. I mean, dude, you really can't blame most of those goals. Dude, some weird deflections. Yeah. I mean, that one McDonald of, well, one, Jesus. Yeah, well, there was that one, and then I think the the McDonald one, I believe, was the one to make it 4-2, right? Uh, 3-2. It was three, a, two. the Korchinski deflection. Yeah, and then the 4-2 one was just, that one was goofy, too. Like, oh, it, Anderson off. Uh, well, you know what? Let's even look at that for a second, because it's just so funny. So, Anderson off Addison's skate. I mean, it's uh, dude <laughs> passes it blindly between his legs, and it just happens to find you know a bouncy a bouncy C <laughs> right yeah. off of Addison, and you're just like, oh, this poor bastard! Like yeah. the like you just you can't buy a bounce. So what you know? What are you gonna do? But. If you're me, I'm sitting there going, hey, baby, that's so sharks. Number one pick, best odds. (laughs) And and like we talked about before, like losing this game in regulation only makes that even more likely, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, losing to the team that you're trying to put space between, uh, that's like that's there's no better way to draw it up. Right. Yeah. Do it again in a week, buddy. Yeah, and especially, you know, the Sharks famously love disappointing everybody at home, so I see no reason why it can't happen. <laughs> oh, dude, I was at the win versus the Senators last Saturday, and I was like, the hell's this W shit? Yeah. Come on, I'm not <laughs> right. used to that. But even that, like, like just to, you know, throw it back a little bit, I, that Senators win was not all that convincing, right? No. And so uh, I, I, I see no reason why the Sharks can't really, you know, kind of settle in here and just <laughs> just go oh and 15 to finish out the season yeah i mean oh. would i would i you know at this point you know would i love five bucks sure but i'd also <laughs> love first overall you know what i mean i know like that a little bit more dude i'm liking this coasting guy a little bit more when it comes to the uh quotes following oh, Clim, your... Clim shady yeah, dude <laughs> Uh, when a reporter said, what did coach say during the timeout? Coaston said, ask the coach. We good here? <laughs> he, he's been really good, dude. Four points in five games, two goals. Dude. Uh, my, limiting the penalty minutes as well. Might be a hero of the week. Uh, you'll have to tune in to see, but maybe. Dude. In Clem Shady, I smell a Fanatics jersey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Quote from Cooley coming in. Oh, man. Loved it. Uh, The experience was amazing. Something I'm working towards, and to do it with my hometown team, it's special. Yeah, you have to dig that part of the story. I I love that. Like, I I don't know about you, but, like, like whatever whatever negatives you want to say about, you know, San Jose, the Bay Area, all that kind of stuff, like, I'm, I'm generally somebody who's very, like, proud and protective of where I'm from. And so for a guy like Cooley to be like, I'm from here. I grew up watching this team. I want to play for this team. Like to me, that's like the coolest thing ever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, I dig that aspect of it. It's very like, cool. ima- like imagine say the sharks draft Celebrini in June oh. and, and he's like, you know, yes, let's I kinda, say that. I kind of, I kind of hated my time with the junior sharks, you know, like, <laughs> like that would suck to hear, you know, <laughs> So that fucking Curtis Brown guy, man, with this whole, why? Because shit more thin, <laughs> uh, a little bit more from Cooley here, uh, before the game was most nerve wracking, trying to get the nerves under control. As soon as I was on the ice, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, that that's usually the deal for most guys. You know, they feel that first shot. And everything else, you know, falls by the wayside. I uh, said, wasn't happy on the first one. I stretched. I knew what was happening. I mean, again, that first one, I mean, Bedard to Johnson to Kershev. Again, it was such a beauty sequence. Nobody was saving that. And then the Sharks get into their ridiculously silly, dumb turnovers and giveaways. One of your favorites, uh, former Shark, Ryan Donato, <laughs> uh, slamming it home. After, I was gonna say that was a nice shot. Do well, and after it like rebounds off of his stomach, 
<laughs> just drops. I it. don't know that that hit him in the stomach. It looked like it hit him somewhere else. Oh, you know maybe a, a, a little lower, perhaps. A little bit lower, not much lower, <laughs> but a little bit lower. Because I was like, because I, and again, this this speaks to like the dual allegiances this season, like wanting the Sharks to do well and also wanting to win the money. You know, I see the puck hit him somewhere, maybe <laughs> stomach. And I'm like, ooh, man, that probably hurt. But, you know, good break for the Sharks. And then it goes in, and I'm like, well, good break for my wallet. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> definitely. But, uh, yeah, it was like as soon as that happened, I was like, yep, had to know the Hawks were going to tie it after being down by two. Like I said, Sharks don't hold leads. Uh, again, Korchinski from a McDonald deflection. You can't put, it, put that on Cooley. And then, <laughs> dude, all I heard was the uh, – SpongeBob, think nine seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson with the quirky deflection off Addison's skate. It's 4 2. And then Bedard. Uh, you know, I, it's not a dick move, but it's kind of a dick move where you score an empty net goal with a half a second left. <laughs> I think I you got it. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, you're, you're coached. To, oh yeah, you know, play to the whistle, if, baby. Yeah, so I I have no problem with that at all. I I think if I'm coaching a team, if I'm on a team, like I don't even care if the horn had gone off. Like you you should be prepared to put that thing in the back of the net. You know, yeah, well, I mean? Bedard doesn't know if there's ten seconds left or half a second left. Right. So, but either way, it was just the way that it looked on TV. It was like, oh yeah, dude, stick the knife in a little further, give it a twist. <laughs> well, and also like. How many people who how many people like bet on Bedard to score a goal in this game and then were just like in hell the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. What you know what would have been great is to see somebody at a sports book or whatever sitting there watching it and then with like, you know, with a little bit of time, as soon as they uh pull the goalie, he's probably like, Oh, come on, give it to Bedard, give it to Bedard, you know, and then right at the Yeah. <laughs> dude losing his mind <laughs> yeah no kidding oh oh another comment coming in from the dressing room from cooley it's unfortunate breaks on the last two goals but going to look at the video and what i can do to be better for my team next time uh gonna be looking at the video and dude on the flight back to san jose chief's gonna be like wearing those virtual goggles <laughs> at the <laughs> Oh. He's gonna be watching the game in his Oculus or whatever. Yeah, it is. no doubt. Or I'm <laughs> sorry, the the flight to Nashville. My bad. I forgot there's one left on this silly stretch. Oh man. Oh, Darren Stevens got something to say. What's this? Our buddy Shark Stats. Sharks were held without a power play for the fifth time this season. A franchise record. Holy fuck. Only eight teams had such circumstances since seventy seven seventy eight. Man. Awesome. Well, I mean, <laughs> dude, work harder. You know, that's well, make and, make guys hook you. You know, and that and that's the thing. And I think we talked about it before, where if you're not, whether it's working hard or were you not displaying a lot of skill, like if you're not, if you're not playing in a way that's jamming up the other team and they don't have to take a penalty, they're not going to. Like, a lot of the penalties that you see taken is like, oh, this guy might do something. We got to stop him. We got to slow this guy down. We got to get in his way. Yeah. Like that's a lot of the penalties you see are that. And so when the Sharks are not playing an inspiring brand of hockey, when it's like, oh, yeah, this Kevin LeBanc guy, doink, thank you, and then you go score, right? I can't believe LeBanc played in this game, right? He did. I, I thought he had a, a good opportunity I early did. in the game, but that was it. <laughs> I didn't even notice him, and I will say – only him and one other player on this team hit dash three. Him and McDonald. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Oh, and I went through. It was funny. I was spending uh, the other night going through. Uh, I was doing digital janitorial, shall we say. Was going through a bunch of old images like, oh, let me get rid of all this stuff. Free up some hard drive space. And I come across this tweet from Kevin Kurz from like 2018 or something that said something about LeBanc, you know, might be getting sent down to the CUDA tomorrow. Or whatever. And I was just like, Christ, he could still, Kurz could still be here. This could legitimately be true. Yeah. If you, <laughs> if you scrubbed the date, right? right. Scrub the date and then just, and, and you're like, Oh, well, yeah, I could see it. Well, yeah. You know? <laughs> it sounds, yeah. Seems legit. 
That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're finally hearing from Quinn now after the game. Quinn saying, up until four on four, we were playing well, just couldn't overcome mistakes in the third. I mean, like we said, I mean, there's a lot of silly turnovers and giveaways. But then again, a lot of weird bounces that clearly did not come to the benefit of Cooley. You know, that that is an interesting point to make. You know, I, I, I don't like to be the guy who's like, oh, the Sharks need a power play. But like think about it like that before that four and four like that was supposed to be and uh you know that was supposed to be a sharks power play and then you know things with addison and uh tyler johnson you know they get kind of squirrely right and really that four on four like the is when the wheels fell off and so more of a morbid curiosity than anything i'm i would have been curious to see what would happen had the sharks gotten that power play you know true yeah that could have been interesting. Uh, let's see here. Quinn also saying Cooley deserved better. Critical turnover, critical mistakes. <laughs> I was going to say critical turnovers, <laughs> perhaps. And Lacey <laughs> talking, LeBanc did take the face off at 1959 of the third period. That was his contribution to the game. But according to uh, media.nhl.com, he lost that face off. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he did. Uh... He he did have an assist as well. He on did on the, the on the Carpenter goal, first goal of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Which and I feel like I mean, positive, but I just as someone who likes that player, I just want to see more, you know. Uh well <laughs> <it> won't, <laughs> next September. <laughs> yeah, it won't be in teal, my friend. Woof. So uh I'm wondering if uh if Puck Guy's done with the uh, quotes because I feel like eh, we can probably move on. I mean, it's a 5-2 loss, and it's it's what we all wanted, people. If you're, uh, you know, like me and Jerk here, where it's just, hey, was it an enter entertaining game? Abso-fucking-lutely. <laughs> For all the right reasons? Debatable. <laughs> but entertaining game nonetheless, and it's what you wanted. A, a loss, it puts, it's a four-point swing between mm -hmm. the two teams that are battling for the basement. And like Jerk said earlier, we get to do it all a week from now. And I'm not going to lie, dude. I hope the result is the same. Yeah. How, how great would that be? I mean, we do. I think you said it. We talked about it last week. How huge were these games going to be? Well, 50% there. Yeah, I mean, especially... Uh, not not to get to you know not to run before we walk here but like could this kind of be the first step in the rebirth shall we say you know what i mean Do, okay hear me out like in 5 years are we going to say man remember when the blackhawks pumped us in those two games and it was awesome like <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> no 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 remember the two things is like First off, it's going to be like, remember when we were all like tilted about Hurdle getting moved? Yeah. And now we're all Well, you have to go moving. even further. Remember when we were tilted that Meyer got moved? <laughs> but, I mean, I really feel like that was the beginning. Well, no. See, this is the part. I want us to come back to this moment. Well, hopefully, it, like I said, hopefully it continues next Saturday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Sharks increase that gap. But. I want it to. Be, I want this to be like the antithesis of like, oh, if they hadn't had that fucking balsers with that hat trick in Arizona or whatever, <laughs> was it balsers or Barabanov? No, Gregor. Oh, it was great. That's what it was. Yeah, Gregor. Okay, I knew it was somebody who you wouldn't have expected. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that whole thing. Oh, they had to go hit that fucking stretch where they won three road games and it fucked everything. Like I want this to be the stretch where we go. Oh, dude, it was because of those two games they lost to Chicago. It was awesome. <laughs> Well, even there was like uh, there was something like that with like last year, like right, like uh, um, I think Chicago beat Pittsburgh last year, and something about that transpiring like locked in the Blackhawks like at the odds to get Bedard while simultaneously putting Pittsburgh out of the playoff spot. Like, you know, it was like there was something about that game where it was just like kind of like a. A, a linchpin for the uh, the NHL multiverse, if you will. <laughs> Jeez. 
All right. So, look, that's I think that kind of uh, puts the bow on Sharks at Chicago. It's a 5-2 loss. Devin Cooley loses his debut, but hey, what did you expect was going to happen? And, and no fault of his own. No fault of his. And as we stated, uh, I think this is what we all wanted to happen if you are team rebuild. Right. So let's uh, get back to the beginning of the week. Uh, Sharks at Philadelphia. It's a 3-2 loss. No torts. Of course, that's a, that's a bummer. But the Sharks did win the special teams in that one, which I think was a shocker. It, it, probably the first time you've been able to say that in a calendar month. Uh, but the Sharks were e- officially eliminated following the game versus Philadelphia, which, I, which oh, uh, if memory serves, I actually tweeted about like, and I'm like, that's when they're getting eliminated, right? And boom, there it was. See, you know, I need that goddamn sports book app that you have on your phone so I can bet on things like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. And didn't did yeah, and and that's a game Zadina with two goals, Cunning with two assists. Well, and and what's what's really kind of interesting about that, right, is we had a conversation last Sunday about <laughs> <laughs> where Zadina. Does, yeah, well, like what what's you know, where does Zadina kind of need to end up uh to maybe have an opportunity here next season and 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 I had said, you know, 12 to 15 goals and he got to 12 in that first game of the week. And so you know, not to say it's locked in, he's going to resign, but I certainly think padding your stats when you need a new contract is like, that's the best case scenario, right? Well, not only that, you also have to assume that over these last 15 games now, mm-hmm. you're going to get ample opportunity and ice time provided you go out there, bust ass, because who's going to take it from you? Right. You know? So it's like, dude, keep keep doing it, man. Get out there, earn earn another uh, contract, you know, year two year deal, whatever. Something that says, yeah, let's. I want to stay in the NHL. Well, and and he's, you know, uh, if you if you factor out the players who are no longer on the active roster, he's fourth on the team in points and second on the team in goals. So it can't have been all that bad, right? Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> So we move on. Sharks at Pittsburgh. Oh, dude. What a clusterfuck game. Now, you have to take into account, of course, that the Sharks got pumped 10-2 the last time these guys played together. And how funny is it that game 65 for the Sharks is against EK 65? That's kind of funny. Uh, Krona gets, of course, gets another start. And uh, this is a a should-lose for the Sharks, of course, because... We're still still hoping that Pittsburgh finishes 11th, in or not 11th, but you know finishes. What would that be? 23rd then? Uh, yeah. My math right? 23rd? Tw- no, 22nd then, wouldn't it be? I'm sorry. Yeah, they would want it to. Th- yeah, no lower than 22nd. There you go. So you you want them to? You wanted to give them a couple points to get them back to that spot. Whew. Right, and as things stand right now, um, you know. Thing, they are uh tenth worst as things stand right now. Is that by points percentage or just points? I believe it's by points. Let me check by points percentage here. Yeah, run that points percentage because it's that seems to trend or at least show you the trend a little bit better. And I know that Pittsburgh they did win that oh. game against San Jose. They're still only three, six, and one over their last ten. Two, three, four. And it makes me wonder so actually, how many home games they have left because at home, they're five games better, but on the road, they're three games worse. So I'll, I'll give you all that information at once. So in terms of points, 11th worst. In terms of points percentage, 11th worst. And they have six home games remaining and eight away games remaining. Oh, that... That feels kind of right where we want them a little bit. <laughs> Got them on the ropes, baby. Oh, baby, let's finish that. And we're going to get to that in a minute. I, that's something that I do uh, want to talk to you about a little bit when it comes to the Pittsburgh pick. But let's get to this game for a hot second. Uh, I mean, dude, I've never seen, it, or if I have, I just don't remember it, the Sharks rolling 13 forwards because of the illness bug going around. Mm-hmm. 
And that's what it took for LeBanc to crack the lineup. Yeah, well, it's real. I mean, I I'm wondering like, obviously, if the Sharks weren't on the road, that probably never would have happened. Like, you right. They would have just they would have called up. I mean, Josh Kanijov or Mukumadulin, right? And and it wouldn't have been a talking point. But well, dude, being if the Wooster the Sharks and, are still a thing, <laughs> that happens. Yeah, no doubt. But I mean, gosh, Benning and Emerson on the IR, right? And then, what well, what was the deal with McDonald? Right, he was sick. Am I correct? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, because they yeah. got a bug going around. Right. So it's just like, oh my gosh, it's just like it, it's sort of a, a an ICU with this team right now, where you know they got five guys on the injured reserve and you know carrying like a full roster and you know it's just it's it's a lot to unpack. So much. But you know what was really cool about this game? <laughs> the fact that it ended. Uh, <laughs> and the fact that Vlasic <laughs> scored. <laughs> Proved you right. I was like, I just, dude, as soon as he scored, I'm like, I feel like I saw that coming. <laughs> Never and in I, doubt, right? Yeah, I was going to say. And then I think somebody like texted me, and they're like, dude, you nailed it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so I did say something. All right, cool. I had to go back and look. But, oh. Uh, that was too funny. And but what was not funny, of course, dude, Granlin takes that hit, and I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Another guy who's gone for the fucking season. And then, dude, he's back on the bench like five minutes later. Did he even miss a shift? I don't know if he missed one or not, but I definitely thought that he was going to just because of like that was nasty. Like dude. It, it just looked it looked like he was really banged up. Dude, between the knee and the ankle, I was watching it going, ah, oh, you know. That's like that's one of those ones that like you, you know, your guy like you play sports and whatnot. Like when you see a guy take a um like a fastball to the mm -hmm. bag, you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, like you fucking feel that. You feel right. a little bit of it. And when I saw that ankle twist and that knee move, oh dude, like I was like that, yeah, you feel a little bit of that. And you're just like, oh, man. And to see. Oh, great heavens. <laughs> <laughs> and to That's see. That's all that was thinking in my mind is like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> you know? Like yeah. Like another guy. To, well, yeah, because this team has been so fucked on injuries this season. And, you know, not to. I'm not going to lie, dude. It, like, when it happened, I went, yeah, that sounds about right. You know, just because of the luck that, that this team has had. When it right. comes to that, um, it was another blown lead, of course. Uh, but, Good. but the, uh, yeah, <laughs> fuck it, man. Why learn to play with the lead right now? You don't need to, uh, we'll, we'll learn that next year. Uh, however, the story that nobody could stop talking about was the fact that a bunch of Jaeger or Jager bobbleheads got stolen. <laughs> Are Which a weird fucking... thing to steal. Dude, what let's be honest, dude. There's no fucking way that there's some group of, you know, <laughs> thieves that are that are targeting it's okay. There's the truck that has all the Gucci purses, and then there's the truck that has all the uh Manalo Blonic shoes. No, no, no. We have to get the ones with the Yager bobble. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I love That's this. like, so it, it, it's funny. So there's Didn't they uh, already say that like a couple of these have popped up on eBay? Like, oh, is, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, but well, how stupid do you need to be? Like, why right. don't you just. Yeah, you're, you're outing yourself. <laughs> yeah, like just, just go to the fucking police station. So it, it's interesting though, like the, uh, the, the rationale or, or I guess the, uh, you know, maybe the disappointed feeling of uh, stealing something and then realizing what the something is like, you know, there, let's just say there's a, on the, uh, the old Las Vegas strip, there's a lot of construction going on. There's also a lot of pickpocketing that goes on. Really? And so it's, it's pretty kind of, it's kind of an open secret. Like if you, are in one of these construction zones or you know someone who is or whatever, like it's not at all surprising to find like just a bunch of wallets 
tossed into the construction zones. Ugh. Because what people will do is the pickpockets will grab a wallet. If there's cash, take the cash. If there's no cash, launch it over the off over the construction barriers. Yep. And so I kind of feel like that's a little bit of the same thing where you maybe maybe you uh I don't know, maybe the truck was left open and you just happen to have a pallet jack nearby. <laughs> and <laughs> and you take these ball heads and you're like, man, I freaking scored. And then you bust them open. You're like, what the fuck is this? Like I don't even watch hockey. And dude, then you know <laughs> four, dude, four D chess move. Okay. The sharks took them and they're like, we'll return them provided we get that number eleventh pick there. <laughs> I there was I there was a degree to which I thought it was a 4D chess move like by the penguins where it was like you know like it was all a work right and it was like part of that night's entertainment to like find the bobbleheads or whatever and then they were going to miraculously show up right right like right. like give them out on the way out like that that actually would have been 4D chess like they do mm -hmm. that whole thing and then as people are leaving they give them out to people Right. That okay. See, that would have been funny. Oh shit! All right, we need to fire that off to some <laughs> some people. <laughs> See how that goes. But yeah, that was uh, oh, that was too funny. Uh, the other thing though is that how if what are you going to do? Like, if you had a ticket for that game specifically because you wanted the bobblehead, and they didn't get distributed, like how do the Penguins deal with that? Do they have to like send out a thing that says, okay, if you had a ticket stub, which they don't exist anymore. Everything's digital. So it's like if you had some sort of proof that you were that you went to that game, show up here on this date. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that good that luck. Is, yeah, that is it is interesting how they're gonna do that. Cause I know like even if you even with the digital tickets, like you can still access them in your digital wallet. It'll show as like, oh, past events or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do wonder if like because you know, um, say you buy a ticket off of like game time or whatever, like the, the name on the ticket is still, if it's a season ticket holders, like it's still their name. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. And, and Lacey's so, saying it would be a good April fool's gag. I'm just saying the sharks do play on April 1st this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on the other thing I did want to point out about the Pittsburgh game before we move on four shots on goal. And three of them went in for Pittsburgh in the third. Jesus. Yeah. All right. So then we uh, get to the Columbus game, 4-2 loss. And this is the one where, like, guys were getting moved. It was uh, Bailey moved up to the third line. Barabanov moved to the fourth. Costin up to the top line. Like, clearly Quinn. And, and to his credit, he's not like, ah, fuck it. You know, season's over. Just, just play. You know, he's right. actually out there saying, no, fuck you. You're not working hard enough. And then another cat, conversely, it's like, oh, this guy's busting his tail. Bump him up to the top line. Gotta love that. Yeah, what? I just, I this game, considering the two teams were pl who were playing, I didn't really expect it to be as one-sided as it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. Like I Like, I was not expecting... Um, I mean, not to say that it's shocking that Columbus got out to a 2-0 lead, but I thought the Sharks would have had some more fight in them just considering, you know, prior to that game, they had won once in their last 12. <laughs> and so I was thinking like, okay, you've done a whole hell of a lot of losing lately and you're playing a crappy team. Like maybe this is a time where maybe you don't win, but you show you have a pulse, right? Mm -hmm. And we got that like kind of really too late in the game, you know? Oh, so much so. But uh, it's another game where Kevin LeBanc had an assist. Uh, what, uh, LeBanc had two assists this week? Yeah. Are you trying to tell me that he like will contribute if given an opportunity? That's amazing. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> so, again, if you're on Team Tank, which we are, uh, the Sharks went 0-4 this week. Huge. Huge. Dude, gigantic. So, right now... The Sharks, last time I checked, that's a four-point difference right now. You know, Correct. They're four points back in Chicago, yeah. And San Jose has another game to lose. <laughs> <laughs> There's a game in hand there. And I think if – I think I was looking into this. I think it's like uh, they get back even early in um, – 
oh, you know what? It might be that game against Seattle on April Fool's Day. <laughs> I think that's the extra game in hand that San Jose has. So anyway, uh, there is your week in Sharks hockey. Now some, some stuff that I want to get into over this week and uh, hear me out. Sure. The more I think about this hurdle trade, the more I hate it. Okay. And the reason being is because it never should have happened. Because Hurdle should have been dealt two years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, and now the Sharks have to pay this guy to play for another team for the next six years. And to me, it's indecisiveness and a refusal to acknowledge reality from Doug Wilson put this team behind the eight ball longer than they should be. That, well, I, and not I, only and that, I, but... I get it that Wilson, you know, was dealing with health issues. Jim Will is the interim GM. There yeah, still had to be some discussion. Yeah, why why are you letting an interim GM make that kind of a move? I mean, literally a franchise altering move. Like cause because it's, are we going to try to hold on to something or are we finally going to admit it's time? Right. And imagine the I'm again, I'm not going to say it would have been the inverse of the EK65 deal, but imagine the hall hurdle brings 2 years ago. And you're not having to eat salary on the deal. Not only that, but here's the thing. Like now, if the Sharks were confronted with this decision in 2020 or in 2021, I could understand re-signing him because you you could you could justifiably say like, yeah, you know, like we've been crappy these last two years, but like the you know COVID was kind of screwy. This was screwy. That was screwy. Like like we're gonna kind of put our best foot forward here, but that season that the Sharks ended up re-signing Hurdle, that was the first full normal season beyond COVID. And they were still brutal. Like <laughs> when you've been brutal three years in a row, like it, it gets to a certain point where it, it, it's not an outlier. It's not an anomaly. Like that's just, it is what it is, right? And there had and, to have been a couple players going, why is Marlowe still on this team? <laughs> right. Well, and, and and the other thing too, like obviously at the time, at the time, I do think that Doug Wilson thought there was a chance he could come back and continue to be the GM, but I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong. Even if here, that was the case, but like I, 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 I feel like if if there's a conversation, like even if it's like even if it's a five percent chance that you don't come back, I feel like the right thing to do is to step aside, which he obviously ended up doing, but it came at a really kind of a, kind of a you know, high water point for this Sharks era, so to speak. Fucking A. And Berg saying, why is Joe Will still here? You know, that is a question. Well, and, 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 you know, I, where I give Joe Will a lot of props is, you know, his Joe Will, he, he like, he's incredibly loyal. Oh like, yeah. He like, uh, I think it was 2000, whenever, whenever the Penguins hired Jim Rutherford, I think that would have been 2015 or 14. Joe Will, by all accounts, was the finalist for that Penguins GM job, which would have been a promotion. And obviously the Penguins won two Stanley Cups right after that offseason. But he opted to stay as the Sharks AGM, which I, I, I think the loyalty is awesome. But at the same time, loyalty doesn't excuse you if you make a blunder, right? Yep. So... Uh -oh. Ian is saying uh, that he blames Hasso and he's not changing his mind. I mean, well, I mean, Hasso hired all, the, put all these people in their place. <laughs> I just, I'm not, I've yet to see evidence that Hasso wasn't snowed by Doug Wilson. You know what I mean? Just kind of like, hey, you know, I was a captain and I played on this team and I won this and blah, 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 blah. Like, listen to me. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, again, this is about the hurdle deal, and it's a deal to, that, to me, never should have happened two years ago when his deal was expiring. And again, what would that haul have been coming back the other way? And let's take it a step further. Do you really think that it would be Vegas as the one offering? Because the, they, they wouldn't have had anything to, to offer. Well, and you well, not only that, but that season Vegas missed the playoffs, so they wouldn't have been trading for him anyway. 
Pay now. And 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 you remember at the time it was like, ooh, the Rangers are interested, Boston's interested, Vancouver's interested. There's a lot you know, of th- talk about Boston. Yeah, there was a, there was a, a a whole assortment of of teams who were like, hey, can we make this work? You know, we'll and, and we even had the discussion. It's like, okay, you know, first round pick. Uh, what prospect, what uh, lesser value roster player. Like it was like there were (laughs) mock trade after mock trade after mock trade. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward two years and admittedly the contract is a big reason for this, but you fast forward two years and, and I kind of get the vibe that Vegas was the only team willing to step up. Yeah. Well, from Shang, uh, he said an NHL scout had said, I understand why the Sharks moved him, but I felt underwhelmed by the return and with all that retained money. Sure. And that, you know, that the the retained money is a, you know, that is a kick in the balls. You got to pay a guy to pay for play for another team for 6 years. Um but there are, Shang says there are also people who think the Golden Knights overpaid for Hurdle, interestingly enough, uh yeah. considering his age and contract and what's not here but I think probably needs to be taken into account is um you know, the issues with his knees. I'm not saying that there are issues, but there have been in the past. You never know how things are going to happen. I mean, look at Stone, for example, when it comes to health issues. Uh, another scout had said Vegas is getting desperate. Um, so there you go. But Well, and we, we kind of discussed that last week, right? Where not to say that it was guaranteed or even half possible, but just the likelihood or the potential rather for 2025 to be a speed wobble for Vegas. And all of a sudden, it's nice having that first round pick in your back pocket, right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I think that's evidenced, like, again, Vegas is obviously a, a good team. Nobody is saying that they aren't, you know what I mean? But look at the standings right now. You know, it, like, it's, it's, likely, it's likely Vegas makes the playoffs. But if they have a speed wobble and Minnesota or St. Louis or Calgary gets hot... Like, wouldn't that be fun? Right. Like that could easily get dicey for them. And the thing is like, yes, the salary cap is going up $4 million, which will help them. But that still is not going to make their life easy when it comes to re-signing guys they need to re-sign or adding to the depth that they kind of had to push all their chips in at the deadline to do for the short term. So I'm not saying that Vegas will be the worst team in the league next year. But the idea of them taking a step back and maybe missing the playoffs, I think it's in the realm of believability. Uh, I mean, dude, they're only five points up on Minnesota right now. And, and six Minnesota points sucks. Up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, d- you are correct. However, Minnesota has more wins in their last 10 than Vegas does. Same thing with St. Louis. Yeah, and St. Louis is winning right now 4-1 to one against the Ducks. Hey, now. So it just goes to show, man, you have some teams that are kind of nipping at the heels. If Vegas stumbles, and again, there's not a lot of runway here. We're, right. we, you know, there's only like 15 games left. So it would it would have to be significant. But I've looked at Vegas's, uh, uh, what do they call that again? A schedule? <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at their schedule, dude. If you, if you, you know, you go in, you... You take a little peek at the last 15. I mean, dude, they're not playing San Jose and Ottawa and Anaheim and all that. Dude, like you just said, um, or who, who's uh, who's playing St. Louis right now? Uh, Anaheim. Anaheim right now. Okay. So last time you – I mean, Tampa Bay, decent team? Yeah, I would say so. All right, that's the next team that Vegas plays. Tampa Bay's been hot lately too. All right then. Then uh, Vegas is going to face uh, Seattle. Not great, but does have a winning record. Uh, and if memory serves, I oh, okay, no. And Vegas beat Seattle in overtime just a week ago. So you have that. But and then Vegas plays Columbus, and you're like, okay, walk fine. But then mm-hmm. Vegas has to play St. Louis. St. Louis is an odd team, but nipping at their heels. Nashville the night after and right now Nashville a better team than Vegas points wise 12 0 and 2 in their last 14 dude rolling and then you get Winnipeg dude last time I looked number one in the central yeah 
They're very good. Then you got to play Minnesota, nipping at your fucking heels. Yeah, critical game. And then you get then you get the uh, the benefit of playing Vancouver, the number one team in your division. Right? Okay. Then you right. get a, a walk, Arizona, fine. But then you play Vancouver again. <laughs> right. And then you play Edmonton. And then Minnesota again, nipping at your heels. And then Colorado. So, so my point being, now, okay, you got a couple, you know, easies at the end, Blackhawks and Anaheim. But my point being, the Vegas schedule, it's there for them to stumble. Yeah. Could you imagine the reigning cup champs completely missing the playoffs? Well, and and I feel like the reigning cup champ missing the playoffs, I, I don't know that that would be all that remarkable, but to be in a playoff spot and push your chips into the center and then have fall out. Oh, dude, because I mean, besides Hurdle, who else? Was it Hannafin and somebody else? Uh, Anthony Mantha. Yeah, dude. I mean, they went out to get guys. But and, and even then, look at this. Like, <laughs> and like, not again, to mention so, the fact that that Stone is just sitting there waiting for game one. Well, but that's the <laughs> thing is, there's no there's no guarantee that he'll even make it. <laughs> dude, you know we all I mean? know he's healthy and ready to go. <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. Like the Vegas Knights, they you know they've got just under ten million dollars in space, which is is. <laughs> more than they've had the last few years. Uh, and that does factor in the cap going up, right? But Noah Hannafin's going to be a UFA. I would, they would be smart to try and re-sign him, right? Alec Martinez is going to be a UFA. Jonathan Marcheseau is going to be a UFA. Chandler Stevenson, Anthony Mantha. So, you know, they've, they're going to have money, but I don't feel like there's enough money to go around to just the guys they need to bring in to have a full roster. And so I think it's going to be another situation where they kind of have maybe whatever, two thirds of a, of a NHL roster. And then in the trade deadline, they're going to have to push everything in the middle again, just to have a full lineup. And and you can only do that as we've seen with many other teams, Tampa Bay being one of them, you can only do that so many times before everything just kind of goes to shit, you know? Oh dude. And if they don't resign March or so, Fans are going to lose their fucking minds. Well, and that's the thing. Like, you, you don't re so Marsha, so Mantha and Stevenson, you don't re sign that trio. That's a whole line there. Granted, they don't have Hurdle right now who they'll get. They don't have Mark Stone right now who they'll get. But beyond that, it's not really all that spectacular. Like, you're going to need, like, guys like Pavel Dorofeyev are going to have to up their game. Guys like Brendan Brisson are going to have to up their game. You know what I mean? They're also going to have to have, like, healthy goaltenders right which you know compared to years past they have this year but relative to other teams in the league they really haven't yeah so anyway uh we'll, we'll see how that whole whole thing rolls but uh you know to me i just sit there and go um you know did did hurdle really want to be here i mean look he's wearing a jacket that says faithful to the bay where is he at <laughs> <laughs> but, i i think cheap joke like, my <laughs> My vibe on the whole situation is that he probably did want to be here, but also recognize that it's not the best time to be here, if that makes sense. But but you know? see here, but here's my here's my point. How did he not see this two years ago? We all did. Well, I, I think that goes back to what we talked about a week ago, where clearly the roadmap provided to him in 2022 by Doug Wilson and Joe Will was clearly satisfactory like he like think about it you you get presented with a roadmap that says hey you know, you know if you <laughs> Timo re Meyer, if you, Eric Carlson Brent Burns <laughs> right like if you if you resign here like this is where things are heading and we think we're going to be back on track right and then 5 months later the general manager who the general manager who gave you the roadmap quits mm. and the as and and the interim general manager who gave you the roadmap step back down to being the assistant general manager and you have a new guy who comes in and that's not to say that Mike Greer made the wrong decision or a bad decision but it's a different decision than what Hurdle was told and so I feel like looking back with all the information we've accumulated like I would almost say the writing was on the wall when Mike Greer was hired no shit and I would it has been pretty funny though to see the fallout from the deadline simply because the Hurdle deal nobody saw coming Nobody forecasted that, but that's going to be one of those things that, you know, that we've, we've talked about, I don't know how many times, you know, 
three years, five years, 10 years from now. And it's like, oh, dude, remember when all those people said, oh, yeah, we totally saw that hurdle deal coming. <laughs> uh, right. You know, so all the people that were there for Timo's five goal game, you know, all 80,000 of them, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, speaking of uh, other, uh, well, when it comes to the hurdle thing, and look, I'm, I'm not here to like, you know, fucking beat the shit out of the guy. We all fucking make mistakes. But um, the uh, the hockey guy did a video this past week about all the major sharks moves. And while, you know, he details all the moves pretty thoroughly, he also said the hurdle deal was bad enough to get the GM fired. Um, <laughs> Not right now, but it could be. Because <laughs> here's the thing, because... The, the prospect, you got David Edstrom, what if he doesn't hit yeah, the but 2025 first No, no, first no, 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 no. What he's, if you dude, that? he's referring to the deal that Joe Will made two years ago. Oh. Um... So I don't know how you say it got the GM fired when the guy is still with no, the show. No, 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 it didn't. It No, he's not saying he's not saying it got Joe Will fired. He's saying it should have or could have got him fired. That's not what the way I heard it. No. Um, he all, oh, now this is the same guy in the same video also said the Carlson deal is why the Sharks couldn't sign Pavelski. I I think I think there's a degree of truth there, but I also don't think that it matters if that makes sense. All right, fair point. So this is the thing that I wanted to get into, which we alluded to earlier. The way that the Pens are are doing, and they played Detroit. How did that go? Uh, oh, they won six to three. Love it, love that. Detroit, who is famously, you talk about having a speed wobble, like <laughs> they, uh, you know, they, they <laughs> like they. All I hear know, in the every time you say that, I don't know if you know the track, but all I hear is a wobble, baby, wobble, baby, wobble, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but like same kind of thing, you know, they, um, they were in a playoff spot, and then it gets right around to the trade deadline, and I think they've, I want to say that they've lost like seven of their last nine or something like that, and so. All of the sudden, like from being in a playoff spot and looking like the rebuild is over to now kind of it, it's it feels like and looks like you can't win. Right. <sighs> Two and eight over their last 10. Yeah, exactly. Oof. Uh. Well, here's my here's my point. And I know that there's going to um, be uh, so, some chatter in, in the chat. If you're the pens now and I don't know everything. I don't I don't claim to. Some others do, it feels like, but I'm not one of those people. If you're the Penguins, do you let the Sharks have the pick because you could arguably be worse next season? And can the Pens even do that? Like, shouldn't shouldn't the Sharks be able to have the option to say, not like, say, for shits and giggles, say that the Penguins finish 10th, 10th worst, right? Mm -hmm. And it's top 10 protected. Do the Penguins at that point have the option to say, you know what? We're going to let the Sharks have this, even though it was quote unquote protected. Yes. Yeah, they can they can defer it. So if it's inside the top 10, they have the choice. But if it's outside the top 10, they have to do it. Right. OK, we'll see. And but, but here's the because, you know, because the Penguins might think, you know what? I, you know, like internally, they're going to sit there and go, fuck, we hate to say this, but we think we're going to be even a little worse next year. Which I, I don't know that that's, I mean, it's certainly possible, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's guaranteed they will be. And I don't know that it's guaranteed they won't be. Like, I kind of feel like it's a, it, it really is a roll of the dice. Well, but okay. And so my other point is say that they finish 10th, 10th worst. And they go, hey, okay, you know what, San Jose? I know it's top ten protected. We're gonna we're gonna let you have it anyway. Shouldn't the Sharks, because they agreed to it being top ten protected, and Pittsburgh agreed to it being top ten protected? What if San Jose is like, no, we think you're going to be worse next year. No, no thanks. You keep that pick. It was protected. We'll take next season. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the Sharks have the. Lug or I don't know if the Sharks have the ability to say no. I'm really not sure. But, man, wouldn't that be cool? Because it's like the whole thing of protecting the pick is that it protects that team. Right. So it seems like it would be kind of an interesting quirk 
if the other team could be like, no, nah, we good. You wanted to protect it. We agreed to that. So it's protected. Yeah. Lay it, lay in the bed that you made. You exactly. I mean? Oh, I like that. And Dude, how poetic would it be to see the Sharks get a top 10 pick from yet another Carlson trade? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, it would just be so poetic. <laughs> yeah, and Ian said, yeah, it doesn't work like that. I get it. But I'm just saying, how great would it, would, would it be if it did? <laughs> but if the Sharks ended up with, like, a really solid pick, all from a Carlson, oh, something poetic about that. Oh, it's so cool. So when the ninth, when the Sharks had 19 games left last week, I set the over-under for wins at four and a half, and I was hammering the under, and then I said, fuck, I'd hammer it at three and a half. Well, now we have 15 games left. Seems like it's looking a little easier to hammer that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, the, the Sharks are really making history this season in oh, all the wrong ways. Oh, oh, dude, so many wrong ways. You know, the, there's there's a part of me that's that's very much like, you know, thinking about everything that occurred between the 14-15 season and the 15-16 season, where it was just like everything kind of went that step backwards so they could take the steps forward. And if memory serves, wasn't there a point of the 15-16 season where the Sharks, like around Christmas or whatever, were like 500? Yeah, they were... They were 16, 16, and one. Yeah. And you were just like, Ugh, you know, and then they, and then they went on. And then I remember, I, and I remember the first game that pulled them out of that slunk because I was, because I was at that game <laughs> and, and, and the Sharks famously beat the Maple Leafs, I think seven to zero. Well, and to be fair, and, who didn't do that that season? <laughs> right. But what I'm saying is, is that was like, you know, DeBoer had done like kind of like very minor tinkerings here and there. And then that first game, I believe it was January 4th or January 7th of 2016. And DeBoer basically threw a grenade on the, on, on the team. It's like, okay, hurdle, you're with Thornton and, and Pavelski Marlo, We're moving you to third center. Uh, oh, Mel yeah. Merrill Carlson, we're moving you down. Couture, you're doing like he threw a grenade on the whole lineup, and then the Sharks ended up going on a crazy run in the second half of that season. Jeez. Well, we're <laughs> I can't wait to see how this team finishes out. <laughs> just, just finish 32nd for the love of God. Just I think it would be awesome. Yeah, just get that aspect of it done. We can't trade any more people away. It says you. <laughs> um, and then something I did forget to mention, because I know I harped on this uh, maybe a year or two ago, um, and I, I harp on attendance from time to time, and it's mostly because I think it's disingenuous to not share the actual numbers that are being scanned along with the purposely inflated numbers. But I have to say, when the tank was back to being completely full for opening night a couple of seasons ago. There was Burns' first night back as a cane. Then it was followed up by the Doug Wilson banner ceremony. Those games sucked because the place was so fucking packed, and especially intermissions. And you have to throw into account that there is no more smoking area where you would have more than a few hundred fans go outside during intermissions and you could get around. Now those people don't have anywhere to go, so it would be packed. So I got to tell you, these games that I've gone to lately where there's only been 10,000 people, it's real easy to get around. <laughs> Dude, it's nice. I like it. So the, it's it's one of those things where it's like, there is a silver lining here. I like yeah. this. Uh, the Sharks released a new collab with Authmade. Have you ever heard of these guys? I have not. Okay, neither have I. So, okay, cool. I don't feel like I'm the only one. Uh, but it says, Elevated sports fashion with Authmade, the premium collection of luxury sportswear. I don't know if I'm the only one that's sick of these collab things. I don't know why this is a thing. I mean, there's a couple of nice items here, sure. But these, in my opinion, are insanely overpriced. And I'm not the only one, dude. There's a whole Reddit thread going off about these ridiculously priced items i mean dude spend your money how you want i will question your life choices if you're dropping 150 bucks on a sweatshirt yeah but not it, everything is for you right? sure sure 
But dude, I'd check out eBay before dropping 250 on a nylon track jacket. And maybe that's, you know, look, I'm, I'll be the first to admit older, older guy over here. I'm playing the back nine. I'm more than happy to admit. Dude, a nylon track jacket when I was growing up, when I was this, the age of the model wearing that thing, a nylon track jacket was like, I don't know, 30 bucks. Now you're talking 250 And I'm sorry, a puffy trucker hat with a generic font? Like, at least go chomp font. And 60 bucks. And if you're going to collab, maybe get some fans involved. I don't know. But I'm looking at this, this mesh hockey top for 200 bucks. You, you got to be kidding me. 85 maybe. And the sweatshirt, I'm sorry, 150 75 maybe. Just, just, come on. Come on. Give me a break. All right, I'll get off my soapbox for a little bit. Let's get to Hero and Zero. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to say you already took Clem Shady, but can, <laughs> can we go with that? Yeah, that would be my pick is Clem Shady, Clem Coston, because uh, four four points in five games, two of them, uh, two of which are goals. Uh, also, he has matched what he's done with the Red Wings already, which is awesome. Um, and he's he's staying out of the box as well, which it, it's kind of like the perfect. Was that an issue in him. Detroit? Um, a little bit. It's really kind of been an issue his whole career. I mean, 66 PIMS in 57 games last year, and then 38 PIMS in 33 games with the Red Wings, and now only one minor penalty in five games. So small sample size, but so far he's stayed out of the box and he's creating offense. And, and it's, <laughs> it's proven to be, uh, it's proven to be a, a nice addition. And I'm, you know, being that he's under contract for next year, I'm, I'm curious to see where things go from here, but so far so good. When I see those numbers though, I just wonder like, are those you equally kind of spread out? Or are those like Vlasic numbers where we've seen it at the end of a season, Vlasic has like 58 penalty minutes or whatever. Then we come to find out that he got like three 10 minute misconducts for popping off at an official at the end of a game. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the situation is, but I do know that he's been a high PIM guy pretty much every league he's played in. So I, I tend to think it's a lot of minor penalties and probably a lot of fighting majors as well. All right, uh, for me, dude, Granlin, and that mm -hmm. that that might be my go-to for the, until the end of the season, to be quite honest. But uh, definitely my hero. Uh, point per game over the last eight, eight games, which doesn't even count the earlier game versus Chicago. And what happened? Oh, had an assist. Another point. Right. Also was a plus one over the previous eight games was an even plus minus, which for this team is saying a lot, I think. <laughs> uh, so, and I know it's a largely, you know, silly stat, but on this team, if you're even, whew, you that that's a positive and even today he was 7 for 14 in the dot so it's like dude you're not i mean you're right there you're winning half your shit that's that's you know <laughs> you know Thomas Bordalo winning one for one but hey you're in the circle winning 7 of 14 that's that's what we're looking for you were better than Nico Sturm today in the dot which is saying something so uh how about your zero for the week zero for the week Gosh, where to even begin, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I kind of feel like I'm I'm gonna do it. it it's Luke Cunning. Like he he had now granted two assists against the Flyers, but I mean, a, a, every dog has their day, right? <laughs> and and so I, I I just don't like what it from what I see from him. Like he's playing obviously a higher role on this team, which you understand because this team's not good, but to be playing a higher role on the team and really not contributing all that much, like, I just, I don't know. I just don't like what I see. You know, I don't like him playing center, you know, 16.7%. I, I don't like him on the power play. I don't like him in the top six or top nine, wherever he is. Like, and that's not to say there, that he's not a player that can bring value. It's just he needs to play in a position that's more, you know, relative to what he brings to the table. Do you put any of the uh, fault on Quinn for deployment? 
Um, I do to a degree. I also think that because Cunnan was Mike Greer's like kind of first big move with a ro- bringing in a roster player, I do wonder if there's a degree of maybe pride that comes with that. Mm. All right. Um, for me, I do like, I was kind of leaning a little bit towards bar Bonoff because like, it was a tough week for him. Although I, I thought he made the most of his game today. So it's pretty easy for me. Uh, big Willie style, dude. Eklund. You got zero points in four games this week. You're a dash seven. When again, the same thing as Cunning, like he's on the top line and he's with, he's with Zetterlin and Zadina who have both scored multiple times this week. Right. So it's like, bro, what, like, show me something. And I look at it, uh, dude, he got no time. Oh, wait a minute. I was like, he didn't even get any power play time today. Oh, that's right, because no one did. (laughs) There were no power plays for the Sharks today. (laughs) But, yeah, it's just, man. Eklund, buddy, need a little more from you, buddy. Need a little bit more. This is going to be your team eventually. Show me something. Mm Mm-hmm. So let's get to the uh, NHL as a whole. Alpharetta Sports and Entertainment, led by Anson Carter, announced its formal request for NHL expansion to bring a franchise back to Atlanta because, I I don't know, third time's a charm? Um, We've already seen Utah request NHL expansion. Uh, How's Bettman and the NHL even entertaining the idea of expansion when the league is currently balanced? But also, of course, but also have the Yotes and the Jets going through tough times. Like, wouldn't it? I mean, you're still going to get money through relocation. Obviously, not nearly as much, but still. Mm, No. What? You don't don't get get any. You don't get any money from relocation. I thought there was a little bit of relocation fee. No. Um, Is that inaccurate? There might. I know there's a relocation fee in the NFL. I don't know about the NHL. Maybe there is. Oh, maybe. I may be conflating it. Again, but I don't I do know, know everything like, and I don't purport to. But like, you know, the, the only way the only way that the NHL would make money off of relocation is if one of these teams moved to Atlanta and say they wanted to bring back the Thrashers, you know, because the <laughs> NHL, the oh, NHL they own owns the property, all the, right? all the Thrashers IP. But beyond that, like the NHL sp- stands to make more money from expansion and, and it's sort of a snowball effect, right? Cause if you have expansion, you have expanded playoffs, you have more games. So no, I don't want any, no, 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 no. Oh, see, Ian says, yes, there is relocation fees in the NHL. Okay. Well, there you go. But again, though, my point being is that when two te- like if every team was just raking it in and everybody was doing super duper well and, you know, everything is awesome. If that was the case, then I'd say, OK, maybe you entertain it. But it's first off, you have one market where it's like it's already died twice now. And I understand that it's it's funny to say something like that when the seals died in the Bay Area. But then the sharks have you know proven to be all right. It's just. Uh, fuck me. Oh, okay. No, if you relocate a team and it changes ownership, there is a fee. There we go. Um. So, but any hoodles, dude. And and just so for reference, when the Thrashers moved to Winnipeg in 2011, they paid a. There was a 60 million dollar relocation fee. All right. And so if you, I'm trying to figure out what that is in 2024 dollars. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. I don't know. My point being is that it's like. So in 2024 dollars, it's like 83 million. But the the NHL is balanced right now. It would be, you know, the football is 32. Baseball is 30. I don't know what the NBA is because quite honestly, I don't give two shits. But it's like it's it's fine. It's nice. It's perfectly balanced. I think to a certain extent, I think you could make the argument that at 32 teams the talent pool has already diluted a little bit i would disagree with that completely okay but i'm saying i have heard people you know making that argument and being against expanding beyond 32 but it's like just move the yotes to utah already just just do it 
I mean, well, I mean, but that's the thing is like the the NHL can't force someone to move or sell a team. Like if, if the Yotes want to bleed money in Arizona every year, that's their right. That's that's true. But again, I just sit here. It just bakes my noodle to to consider like, really, we're going to keep expanding like it's just. But again, the reason the reason why I say it's not my reason, money. What do I care? <laughs> the reason why I say the talent pool is not diluted is because in the Eastern Conference, you have 13 teams fighting for eight playoff spots. And in the Western Conference, you've got 12 teams fighting for eight playoff spots. So you you have more good teams than spots. So that would be the argument to where the talent pool is not diluted when you have more say playoff caliber teams than playoff spots because i think you know a lot of the dialogue that i've heard about um you know the talent pool de- being diluted is like usually people and again it all funnels back to vegas people are triggered <laughs> people are triggered about the fact that you know People are triggered about the fact that Vegas took their 12th favorite player and they won a Stanley Cup in six years. Like, it's all just stupid. And I see people saying in the chat, the talent pool is watered down. But tell me how. Tell me why. Like, you have more playoff caliber teams than playoff spots. Goals per game is at a higher level than it's been in 30 years while still having goaltender save percentages on an individual basis higher than it's been in recent years give me a a legitimate reason why the talent pool is diluted besides saying well it's diluted like i i've yet to hear a quality argument i've only heard quality arguments on my opinion well let 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 me ask you kevin lacy back up i've always loved kevin (laughs) and again i'm not saying i'm making that argument i'm just saying Listening to NHL radio, look at some of the comments or whatever, and I know everybody. Oh, everybody's got a comment. I was just pointing out what I had read, and one of the reasons why people were arguing against it. Now, my whole thing is, you want to have that many? Fine, do you? My whole thing. Please don't expand the playoffs. Sixteen is fine. I don't want to get uh, to twenty teams. So I, when half the league is already making it. It's fine. Yeah, but again, it goes back to what I'm saying of you have more quality playoff teams than uh, playoff spots. Uh, it's yeah. the thing that see, this is the thing that gets me is when it comes to the playoff picture is you could ju- you could have a team that busted their ass all season, you know, did really, really well to, to get that top spot or whatever. They just happen to face a team that, uh, gets hot at the right time. And, you know, eight versus one, eight, you know, eight taken. This is obviously back in the other, in the, in the day, but you'd see some eight team that just happened to catch fire at the right time, knock out a team. And then the next, the very next round, they get knocked out. It would, it's, and that could happen in any sport. I just, there, when half the league is already making the playoffs, it's like, what the fuck is the point of the regular season? Well, maybe that's why, again, I, I do think there has to be, well, I don't know that there has to be, but I do think, I do think that, um, I, I, again, you you have teams that because it, it comes off like it's like the, you're all going to make the playoffs, and then you f- four teams are going to suck for the number one draft pick. It's one or the other. Yeah, but 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 again, like what I, the NHL like the NHL is is not in the business of making people happy. They're in the business <laughs> of making of uh, they're in the business of making money, and if you can make money. From that, I say you do it. The NHL, or I'm sorry, the NBA playoffs is evidence of that. The the NBA adding a play in, the NFL adding a, an extra wild card spot. Like these are all things that happen, and it's because you have more good teams than playoff spots. You want more competitive games, more intensity, more excitement. More. But, but let's call I, it what it is. It's money. Well, sure, but but that but again, intensity and excitement and and eyeballs, it all goes down the road. That road, you know what I mean? 
Uh, I just, just, just let me have 32 for a little while. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Would, would, uh, do you think it would be cool to restart the Thrashers or would Atlanta have a brand new team? I kind of feel like if I'm, if I'm a prospective owner in Atlanta, I want a brand new franchise identity to yeah, really you don't want that. separate yourself from the stink. Yeah, uh, right. Now, what would be a good name? Because I like fire. <laughs> so, uh, as, as, as a flames as a, uh, versus fire, come on. As, as a historian, I, I I am inclined to tell you that. Uh, do you or I'm inclined inclined to ask? Do you know the history behind Atlanta and fire? Are you familiar with Sherman's March at all? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I like it's a historical just, reference. <laughs> uh, yeah, but in, in all the wrong reasons. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> oh man. Never, never, never once, aside from the Atlanta Flames, never once have I heard of a pro sports team telling or uh, naming their franchise after a moment in history where their city was burned down <laughs> purposely. <laughs> all right, I feel you. I mean, what like. I'm not going to say what I thought. So I mean, we do <laughs> have the get, San. Get a, we do have the San. The well, they do have the San Jose earthquakes. That's okay. That's a more tame <laughs> version of that. Um, I guess if I guess I mean I don't know what to say without being like really um, really hyperbolic. So <laughs> let's just get to the prize. Uh, oh, we got a couple other things. Uh, let me ask you. Let's don't say, ask me. I don't care. Let's let's say Vegas. <laughs> let's say Vegas makes the playoffs. Sure. Let's say Stone is available and plays in game one. Sure. How much is social media going to lose their mind? They're going to lose their mind, and they're all going to be a bunch of stupid idiots for doing so. All right, then. Uh, because, again, I, I made the argument last week. Okay, Tampa then. Bay, let's move on. Tamp Tampa Bay is committing bloody murder by using LTIR. Vegas is committing bloody murder by using LTIR. But those two teams have won the cup. Remember when Edmonton did it and Toronto did it and Carolina did it and Florida did it and LA did it and all these teams, uh, Ottawa, I believe, or not Ottawa, I'm sorry, uh, Montreal did it, like Winnipeg, like all these teams, fans and media members and all this stuff who are, yes, thank you, Beat Plug, all these team and media members who are bitching and moaning about LTIR abuse are either fans of or cover a team that did it and didn't win the cup. But Avalanche fans, Golden Knights fans, Tampa Bay Lightning fans, you never hear those fans bitch about LTIR because, number one, they won the cup, so why would they bitch about something? Number two, they know they're well within the rules, and so it does not matter. Like, again, I've, I've said it a million and one times, and I'll say it again. If you think the Lightning don't want Kucherov in the lineup, that Vegas doesn't want Mark Stone in the lineup, that Colorado doesn't want Gabriel Landeskog in the lineup. Like, if you think these teams don't want their best players playing, you may be one of the stupidest person people to walk on this planet. I'm just saying. Maybe that's a bit extreme. If you don't like that and it turns you off from the podcast, later. But, like, <laughs> we still have to use our brains here, people. Uh, can, I, can I get really morbid for a second? Well, do it. All right. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Here's the question. Say that New York gets a team after the year 2001. Would they even consider the idea of naming the team Jets based on what happened? Yeah, like, I that's would've... a serious question. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing. that That's like, that's why... You know, the Atlanta Flames being what they were is so interesting to me. Right? You know what I mean? It's like, hmm. Like, like again, like, like uh, you know, and even even Colorado Avalanche is a bit a bit on the line. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> like, like how many like how many people in Denver have been buried under snow? <laughs> like catastrophically. You know what I mean? Dude, I'm saying it. Got to got to think it's more than zero. Yeah, you would think. Uh, all right, let's uh, hit some quick things here with some Jersey talk. Um, I, dude, everybody knows that I call out fanatics on the regular, but I wanna, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. So in giving fanatics a benefit of the doubt with NHL jerseys, look, Nike fucked up Major League Baseball jerseys so, so bad. Fanatics knows that their shit is going to be under the microscope when it comes to the NHL. But let's... You know, one of the things that we haven't talked about is Adidas. 
Dude, the Adidas Indomade jerseys suck, in my opinion. Like, they're paper thin. They flare out like dresses on the bottom. It's honestly why I started buying MICs, because MICs actually fit correctly. Reebok were miles fucking better when it came to the replicas and shit. So if Fanatics improves the retail versions, we're going to have to give them a big win on that and a big middle finger to Adidas. I'm, I'm interested to see how that's all going to play. And now, speaking of Adidas, let's look at the last jersey that they are ever going to produce. There will be no more new jerseys from Adidas this season. Your favorite jerk, Spats. Tell me that this isn't a significant fucking upgrade. Uh, it, I, I do think it is an upgrade. I, I, Huge. Wish, the, I wish the collar was still green, but other than that, mm-hmm. yeah. Completely agree with you. But you know what? I think the, uh, the chest is such an upgrade that I'm fine with it still being white. But I do agree with you. Like, I don't understand why they didn't just keep the color, but it's probably because they do want to differentiate it a little bit more. And why they didn't add numbers on the photo, I'm not sure. From what I understand, they're, they're, they are different enough that they should have put those on there. But, dude, tell me they didn't finally fix a huge fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus. And in Carolina, the Hurricanes look to be going through a rebrand. Now, seeing how Jersey processes take 18 to 24 months, this could be a while. But evidently, a survey went out to the fans, this being reported by iStetics. Uh, we got some new logos to talk about here. Uh, let's just talk about the top ones first, where they're kind of like redoing the, the Hurricane logo. I mean, I mean the, the Hurricanes have kind of the Hurricanes have kind of had an identity crisis for a while now, right? I mean, they got like, you know, they the the jerseys uh, they were one of the teams. Uh, when Again, the NA- but hold on, let me just also say another team named after disaster. Go ahead. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the Hurricanes they were one of those teams back in 2017 who got completely new set of uniforms. Uh, when Adidas took over, it was, and when I say new, I don't mean brand new, but just like different. So like it was Carolina and Vegas, obviously refreshed. Like, yeah. Carolina, Vegas, Florida, San Jose. There was a couple of, I think there were seven. And, um, so Carolina got like newish, newer jerseys. And then a couple of years later changed the white Jersey. Right. And then a couple of years later, they introduced the black Jersey and then make the black Jersey, their home Jersey. And so Carolina's had a bit of an identity crisis for a while now. And, you know, I do give them props. They were the first ones to tinker with um, the color helmets with the white uniforms. So shout out for that. But, I mean, it kind of feels like, and, and, you know, uh, Beat Plug is kind of speaking what I'm speaking. Their heritage jersey that they did last year or two years ago, like, I feel like that was probably the best look they've ever had. And so, you know, New logos are awesome, but just like bring back what you already did really well the first time. You know? <laughs> well, I gotta say, like the uh, if we're talking the top row, which is would basically be the new crest. And remember, the middle the, one is the best. Well, these and these are preliminary. You know, these are these are starting points. Um, I don't know. I mean, you say the middle one is the best. I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards the right. Where that was my second choice. Where, well, I mean, let's be honest, dude. It, there's not a lot of choice to go around here. <laughs> the, no, but uh, like, I, but like, I hate that one on the left. Like, I would choose the middle and the right one twice. Well, to me, yeah, but the, the thing on the, the one on the left, it's like, just make that the captain's patch. It already is. Well, that's what I'm saying. So <laughs> that it's stupid to, you know, to try to make that a crest. Uh, but the two, you know, primary options here, the, the realistic ones, I should say. I like the one on the right a little bit better because I think it's like, okay, we're going to, it's a slow ev- evolution. To me, it's it's kind of like how the Sharks logo evolved from the OG crest to the current one. Sure. Uh, where the original one is a bit more flat and two-dimensional. This 
adds another element. I, it certainly doesn't make it more three-dimensional, but it adds another element with the negative space C in there. I think maybe you could do something to add some dimension to it, but at least I get what they're going for. But I there's something about it that when you see it like that, it just screams like minor league team from Cincinnati. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, kind of like minor league baseball almost. Yeah, I don't know if it's the font, but either way. Now, when it comes to the word marks below, like the the middle one, I think is just like why? Like it's so unnoticeable. Right. If anything, I go with the one on the right just because it uses the state outline, which you don't see really on Carolina stuff, whereas the, you know, the storm flag marker They've used the crap out of that. Right. It's like, do you really need another version of that? So anyway, it'll be fun to see what happens. Again, these are preliminary designs that were sent out in a survey. As we said, it takes 18 to 24 months to start a jersey from day one to actually guys wearing it on the ice. Not to mention the fact that Fanatics takes over NHL jerseys this summer and it's going to be two years. Everybody was told for the first two years, don't give us any new shit because we're not, you know, doing any of it. So this will, you won't see this before the what, seven, eight season, 27, 28. So probably, yeah. Yeah. That's probably when you're going to do it. So let's get to our tweet of the week. And uh, look, who doesn't love pet peeves? We're going to get back to uh, the hockey guy here in a minute. I uh, I enjoyed this video because a lot of the shit that he had to say, I agreed with. But a couple of the things, it reminded me from a lot of the talks that you and I have had about like center ice and, and checking out other feeds. Um, so pet peeves, last minute commercial breaks. I don't give a shit. DJ sameness. Completely agree. Like it, you, li you watch any game on any feed, and it's always the same music. Completely agree with that. Interviews during gameplay. Do you care? Is that a question for me? Yeah. Like, do you give a shit if a player? I'll be totally honest interviewed? with you. I don't really, I don't really care about any of these. But yeah. <laughs> All right. The only, the only one. The only one that I'm kind of down with is number five, number, number four, <laughs> uh, number five to a lesser degree, like more of an individual basis. Um, but number four. Okay. The double header thing. Oh, yeah, that, just that because... they, they fucking delay the puck drop forever to, so they can have somebody fucking pop off for five minutes about something stupid from the previous game. No, not, not even that. No, it, it's talking about the fact that the first game goes over. And so the second game has to wait. Like mm. the, NH the NHL famously has needed to do a better job um, about staggering their games. Big time. Oh. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah. Color announcers who talk too much. Uh, mm, yeah. For the most part. Uh, showing injuries from different angles. I mean, just don't look at the screen. I don't understand what the problem is there. Uh, now the mentions of the, all the gambling stuff during play that, that I will give him like the people like you, uh, you have the shit on your phone. Like if you are interested, if you are an interested gambler, the way that you are jerk, you're like, I, I know what I want to bet on. I don't need to have to be bombarded with it during a game. That, that is annoying. And then, yeah, the for me though, it is the the bottom two that are really annoying. The the flickering board ads that continue, and then Chiron's turning into ads during the play. That is quite annoying. It's like um, like there's enough ads on the boards, on the ice, in the commercials. The last thing it needs is more. Stop it. Just stop, please. We beg you. Ooh, Barracuda. Oh, this poor fucking franchise. All right. Uh, one win in their last 10 games, despite a three-point game from Ethan Cardwell yesterday. And oddly enough, Ethan Cardwell would score the only goal for the Barracuda earlier today. Uh, Cuda is as good as eliminated. So uh, keep an eye out for some sort of wrap-up from Ian, Jules, Kevin, or Mark, a collection thereof, giving you 
the disappointing end to a CUDA season that was supposed to be so much better. And make sure to follow Teal Town USA, Ian Reed, Sharks Jewels, Lacey, and Mark E on Twitter for all those takes when it comes to the CUDA and prospects in the Sharks organization. Prize time, bro. Bordalo let me down, I feel like, today with a single shot on goal. So well, I feel like if anybody took Chicago, they lost. Well, so check this out. This one is going to really... <laughs> This one's going to really wire you up here. Nice. So Thomas Bordalo had, I'm just going to run right through it, three shots against the Flyers, two shots against the Penguins, three shots against the Blue Jackets, and one against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. So a total of nine shots on goal this week. But now with, r- remind everybody well, hold what... On. Okay. Well, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. getting there. I'm sorry. My Not, bad. Nine shots on goal this week, and the highest game... Uh, or I'm sorry, the game with the most shots is uh, Philadelphia and Columbus because you got three in both. So the winner is me. (laughs) Hold on. Didn't you tell everybody what it was going to be last week? I told everybody the answer. Then how how was it not molasses? Because he always copies you. Well, so it is also molasses. (laughs) I fucking knew it. Now, obviously, <laughs> as the as the host of this game, I don't know that it's fair that I win. No, it is not. But I won, and I want everybody to know that I won. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you win? You told everybody what the fucking I answer. told everybody what the answer is. You, lo- you love the third that? third time the win- this has happened. You love that? The winner is me. <laughs> now... Now, next up, Michael, <sighs> Michael Molasses. This is the third time that Molasses has won, so I'm sorry to say. He already got his Chichu signature signed puck. No, got no Nieto. Thing. Nieto signed puck. So, uh, don't worry, Molasses. You are you got another ticket for the end of the season raffle. Don't you worry. There you go. Which we will do live on the last Pucknologist of the season. It could be the last Pucknologist ever. We'll find out. <laughs> so, the winner... Long, long, long time player. Uh, first time winner? Very first time winner. Yes. Long time player with nine <laughs> shots on goal, picked the wrong tiebreaker, but the only person besides Molasses and myself to say nine shots on goal, Andrew Moore is your winner. All right. Andrew Moore is also one of the few who does not email me their answer. They send it to me on Twitter. Oh, interesting. So, shout out to Andrew Moore. Um, I have already contacted... If you're listening to this, you've already received a DM from me asking what your address is. So, Fantastic. that's really all I got for you. <laughs> well, um, it should also be noted, uh, for those who were waiting on their prizes, I was finally able to get to the post office earlier this week, so everything went out. Um, so, by the time you're listening to this, you should have already received your prize packs. So, I we're, I'm... Aside from Andrew Moore, I'm completely caught up, right? Yeah, so the the previous outstanding prizes were Cameron, Mercy, Santino, and Max, and all have been sent out. Killer. Love it. Love it. All right, so uh, I have an idea for this week. If you want to shout it down and come up with something better, I'm completely open to that jerk. My idea, My idea was what about team save percentage against – the Sharks this week. So we would average the performance of the three goalies, Nashville, Tampa, and Chicago, that will be facing the Sharks this week. I'm all for that. Closest without going over? Of course. All right, then. So there you go. Well, wow, it was so easy. I love it when that happens. So the question of the week to get a prize pack, you need to submit to Hockey Jerk via email, hockeyjerk10 at gmail.com or at hockey underscore jerk on the Twitter. Either one will work. You need to give him the answer to what will be the combined save percentage from the opposing goalies for the three games this week at Nashville versus Tampa versus Chicago, closest without going over. Your, you know, would you like to give everybody the answer? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes. As a matter of fact, I would love I'm gonna, to. I'm going to say that. 0.914. Um, 
it's got to be higher than that with Nashville and Tampa. No, this week's um, the combined. There's three games, right? Three games at Nashville versus the Lightning, and then versus the Blackhawks. So the win- the correct answer is uh point nine one five. That's the correct answer. See, I'm gonna take the over on that. Okay. That's I mean Morazic today had nine two three. A blind squirrel does find a nut every now and again. You are correct, sir. So there you go. That's uh that is the question. And uh, when when uh, Nashville's on Tuesday, right? Um yeah, Nashville Tuesday, 5 Pacific, Tampa Bay Thursday, 7.30 Pacific, and then call Chicago Saturday, 7.30 Pacific. All right, so make sure to get Hockey Jerk your entry in before Puck Drop versus Nashville, and away we go. And remember, we only have, uh, what, uh, fuck, how many are we doing? There? Five more of this shit? So after, after tonight, we have one, two, three, four, five more shows. Hell yeah. All right, so only five more opportunities after tonight to uh, win a prize pack. And, f- dude, funnily enough, I went down to, to the old ye old storage unit <laughs> okay, <laughs> and looked. I literally have, uh, including today, so six, right? Mm-hmm. I literally have six hurdle bobble heads left. I have, I think, six lunch boxes left. Uh, when it comes to the uh, uprising jerseys, oh, dude, I still got like thirty of those. Left. <laughs> we might start doubling up on jerseys. I'm just letting you know. And the other, thing, yeah, you got a friend here. Take it. <laughs> right. The other thing I should note as well. I don't know if you if you wanted one of these, dude. I mean, they are XL. I don't know if you want one or you want to give one to uh, Sam to uh, chop up and make into a, like a cool something, but. Uh, if there's it, maybe I kind of want to hold on to this in hopes that a uh, a female w- viewer will win one of the contests and be like, no, give me one of those women of teal jerseys. I want one of those. I think that would be tight. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just saying that option is available to you. And let's be honest. Over the next four, if that doesn't happen, the last two winners may end up with one of these, whether they want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, that's how we're going. All right, uh, good sir. How many? How many are? Um, how many are at home this week? Or so we have. So we have not, no nine left. Nine home games left. You still need two taco games. I feel pretty good about my odds. Oh boy, I don't know. Like I almost want to fucking double it, uh, double the bet up right now because I'm feeling really good about it. I don't know, man. I'm just saying, Chicago, St. Louis. Dude, they couldn't put. A, they Arizona. only put up two against Chicago today. Yeah, but today is not next Saturday. Uh, you know, I've heard that is correct. <laughs> Many people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so three games this coming week at Nashville, then hosting Tampa, hosting Chicago, Bedard's first ever visit to SAP. Uh, I will be there as well, so if you're at the game next Saturday and want to uh, swing by the South Bar and say hi, that's that's the place to do it. On Twitter, you can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. You can follow me at AJ underscore strong. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave your take in the comment section of the video if you were not able to join us live. And you can help come keep us, excuse me, keep us commercial free by using the super chat option during the live shows or better yet, use Venmo. Find us at Teal Town USA. And as always, if you are among the Discord peeps, and you want that 24-7 fix of Sharks Talk, hit up the jerk man at hockey underscore jerk on Twitter. Score your very own VIP invite. And you can always find everything when it comes to the social media, podcast apps, and more. They're included in the show notes. And everything is on tealtownusa.com. And remember, for those three games this week, check out After Dark. It happens after every single Sharks game. Oh, boy. So uh, we're on regular time next week. I was a little more excited about today, to be honest with you, because regular time was 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a, there, there's a certain, uh, there's a certain uh, 
type of food that is uh, calling my name. If you <laughs> <yummy>. <laughs> I'm telling you. And uh, J11, how pissed would I be if the Penguins win the Celebrini lottery? The chances of that are... I'd, Very unlikely. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't even think I can quantify that. You know what? I'll, uh, I'll ask you the final question before we get out of here. Uh, any thoughts on Weisblatt being sent to the ECHO? I well, hold on. I was. I don't think he was sent to the ECHL. I'm pretty sure he was sent to the. Unless the Milwaukee Admirals are in the ECHL. Uh, oh, excuse, you know what? Excuse me. My bad. He was sent somewhere. And again, yeah, but I was gonna. Say, like, um, my I, bad. Hold on, Admirals. Isn't it? Doesn't like. Doesn't Lacey have an Admirals jersey? Yeah, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin does have an Admirals. Jersey. Is he gonna get that plated with Weisblatt now? <laughs> that would be. That would be cool, dude. Yeah, it is kind of interesting to me, like of all players, right? But I don't know, maybe it just kind of is like, you know, this guy doesn't really fit the system. And so they want to try him out somewhere where he does fit the system, you know? Loan to the Admirals. Okay, yeah. not so, Okay, again, I don't know everything. I, I saw a little bit, and yes, I could do better to write that shit down. That's on me. I just I just saw that he was sent somewhere. And to be quite honest, once it all went south... Uh, for the CUDA, I kind of stopped paying attention. <laughs> That's why I let Lacey and Ian and Jules and Mark, they are the ones that uh, will will be your fix for the prospects in the CUDA. I just, you know, it was a glance. It was a horse eye moment is what it was. So uh, that's that'll do it. And uh, I, I just want to get a commitment right here and now. What's going on on Easter, buddy? Am I, uh, am I alone? Uh, that's on March 31st, right? Yes, sir. Um, I'm leaning towards having to tap out of that one. But I'll know, I guess, I don't know. We'll see. Will, will you be able to make an announcement next week? Or at the very least, announce that you're going to make an announcement? Y yes, I will make an announcement next week. Love it. <laughs> so we thank you so much for listening. We will catch you next Sunday at our normal time, 7 p.m. Pacific. Here it is, your moment of zen. Fire everyone. <laughs> <laughs>